Greetings from the Jazz Cloud, I'm Richie Zellen, and today I am excited to share with you a hidden fretboard resource for improvisation. I'm sure that you agree with me that the guitar is a very visual instrument, and many players take advantage of this feature to recall certain chords and scale patterns. I think of them as fretboard constellations. With that in mind, in today's lesson, I am going to show you a shape that repeats itself throughout the fretboard. As a result, it can be used to visualize and create improvisational lines that fit over several chords that we encounter in the jazz standards repertoire. Just listen to the unique sound of the line I'm about to play, and that'll give you an idea of what I'm going to teach you next. So now that I hopefully have your attention, let me begin by explaining the meaning of tetratonic polygonal shapes. <laughs> I know, tetratonic sounds like some foul tasting tonic that guarantees to either make your hair grow back or kill the coronavirus. <laughs> but it is simply the term to denote a four note scale in the same way that the pentatonic which many of us hold so dear to our hearts denotes a five note scale having said that it just so happens that the melodic minor scale has four notes in it that when played on certain groups of strings they can be arranged to form a quadrilateral polygon also known as a rhombus <laughs> Sounds like the name of a Cuban dance, right? Everybody dance the rhombus. <laughs> and of course, these shapes are available for all the modes of the melodic minor. Furthermore, the beauty of it is that there are no so-called avoid notes in any of these modes. That means that you can play any of the notes that make up these fretboard constellations and they will blend with the related chord being played. So next, I'm going to show you how I organize these shapes, but be sure to stick with me because after that, I am going to show you how they sound when played against different chord types. Finally, I'll teach you how we can easily create lines with them. This is the melodic minor scale in B-flat. If you don't know it, you can think of it as a B-flat major scale and just lower the third a half step down. Next, I'm going to uh, extract a tetratonic from it, and my four notes consist of the flat three, the four, the six, and the seven. And there's a reason why I've chosen these specific notes. If we take the seven and bring it down an octave, while leaving the other ones in place, we end up with a four-corner polygon. Now, because of the tritone and its symmetrical nature, we can create additional constellations on other string groups, which will contain the same notes in a different order. So first we have this shape. Now, if we start the same shape at the tritone, we have another similar shape. And then, of course, we have a third uh, partial shape, so, and we can't complete the shape as usual here because of the uh, 
tuning in thirds for the second and uh, third strings. So we have to go. <laughs> There's a new term you can impress your guitar buddies with on your next uh, jam session. You know, you can just ask them, can you play some inverted tetratonic polygons over that B-flat altered? <laughs> uh, well, on the subject of the tritone, if you want to learn more about them in general, please be sure to watch the lesson I did recently called Reharmonizing Autumn Leaves. It doubles as a masterclass in using the tritone substitution principle. And by the way, in that video, I stated that tritones matter. Well, after offending some overly sensitive viewers, let me make it up to them today by saying, tritones matter, but so do all the other intervals. <laughs> if, music only consisted, if music only consisted of tritones, we would only be able to play music with dominant chords, and that would be the blues. And now I understand what happened to good old Robert Johnson and why he used to sing, Me and the Devil. Me and the Devil <laughs> was walking side by side. I said initially that uh, these shapes can be applied to all the modes of the melodic minor. So let me show you how this works in the key of B flat minor. When I play the shape starting on the sixth string, that first note functions as the major seventh of the B-flat melodic minor. Look at the notation while I play a B-flat minor major seven. One, two, three, four. Now I'm going to play the same identical shapes and notes against an A7 altered chord. So now my note on the sixth string is acting as the actual root. By the way, for this reason, this is the mode I'd like to use as my initial reference point when superimposing these shapes over the different modes. Somehow it is always easier to think of the lowest note as the one when transposing. One, two, three, four. Now I'm going to play the same shape and notes against an E flat seven sharp 11 chord. So now my note on the sixth string is acting as the sharp 11 of the fourth mode of the B flat melodic minor scale, which is a E flat Lydian dominant. One, two, three, four. Next, I'm going to play the same shapes and notes against a uh, G minor nine or G minor seven flat five chord. And now my note on the sixth string is acting as the two of the sixth mode of the B flat melodic minor scale, which is G Locrian natural two. One, two, three, four. Finally, I'm going to play the same shapes and notes against a D flat major seven sharp five chord. So now my note on the sixth string is acting as the sharp five of the uh, flat three mode of the uh, B flat melodic minor, which is a D flat Lydian augmented. One, two, three, four. So you're probably wondering how you can create interesting lines using the notes that make up these shapes. You obviously don't want to go up and down the fretboard in the order I did because it would get old and predictable very fast. Before I teach you some cool concepts, let me make a disclaimer. This concept is not to be used exclusively when improvising 
at the expense of more conventional resources such as scales, arpeggios, and use of chromatic notes. It is meant to be combined with them. Remember, tritones matter, but so do all the other intervals. So keep this in mind throughout the remainder of this lesson. I am only giving you different ideas restricted to this concept, meant as exercises to help you master it. You are responsible for incorporating them into your playing and combining them with the other resources you already are familiar with. In other words, you can use this concept for short segments to create variety in your playing, but not as the main dish. Think of it as one of many spices you can add to embellish portions of your solo. To get creative, you can start out by using permutations. And in math, a permutation is defined as the action of changing the arrangement, especially the linear order, of a set of items. And this is very practical and manageable with tetratonics or four note chords. By the way, if you want to gain a deeper understanding of this subject, be sure to check out my video, The Power of Permutations. <laughs> I also have a mini course on my website on how musicians like John Coltrane and Alan Holdsworth practiced using what has come to be known as the Bible of Musical Permutations, Slonimsky's Thesaurus of Scales and Patterns. So let me show you a couple of permutations of the tetratonic polygonal shape. And I say a couple because there are a total of 24. If you look at the diagram, you'll notice that I've numbered each corner of the uh, quadrilateral polygon. And these numbers do not represent musical intervals, but instead a group of four items which just so happen to be notes. And by numbering them, we can now begin to arrange them in different orders and come up with the various permutations. Notice that the one is assigned to the lowest corner in the shape. The two is assigned to the left corner. The three to the right one. And the four to the top one. Just keep in mind that uh, when we look at the fretboard, the one is on the lowest string used. So. And then over the tritone. So, one, two, three, four, and again, one, two, three, four. Now, let's rearrange the order of the notes to be played as three, two, four, one. So, uh, we have uh, three, two, four, one. And the uh, next shape we have three, two, four, one. And if I were to use it on the partial shape, we would have three, two, four, one. So now let's try one, four, two, three. Here it is in the uh, bottom shape starting on the sixth string one four two three starting at the tritones shape one four two three and if i play it on the partial shape one four two three now let's combine three, two, four, one, and one, four, two, three to come up with an eighth note line. One, two, three, four. Now let's take it a step further and explore adding chromatic passing tones between the two and the three of each shape. So if I have uh, three here 
and I'm going to a two in the first shape, I can add a chromatic in between. I can do the same thing when I go to the next shape that starts over the tritone of the first shape, and the three would be here. So, and I can go to the partial shape, and the three would be here. Now, I can also reverse these uh, chromatics and play. And. Here they are combined to fit a measure. Because we are adding two chromatic notes, we now have a total of 10 notes. So to fit them all into the measure, I will play eighth note triplets for the segments of two and three with a chromatic in between. One, two, three, four. Like I said earlier, there are 24 permutations, but we can't explore them all here. However, I've prepared a mega download for this lesson on my site, which not only contains all the permutations, but a lot, lot more of stuff which I will tell you about after I teach you another resource using these shapes. I'm going to show you two sequential patterns that progress through the three shapes. Uh, they both work with any of the modes I pointed out earlier. And for these examples, you will hear an A7 altered chord in the background and a D minor major 7 as the ending resolution chord. And this first one is ascending. One, two, three, four. <laughs> play it slower. One, two, three, four. And this next one is descending. Next, I want to show you a line using the shapes over a minor 251. Be sure to stick with me because after that, you will hear what the concept sounds like in the context of a standard as I use it to improvise. But before I continue, I want to let you know about the study package you can download from my website to better learn this concept. It consists of several PDFs with regular notation and tab featuring application of the shapes to five modes and chords, the 24 permutations, six sequential patterns that work with the five modes, and eight minor 251 lines to get you started. Included are also audio mp3s of all the examples as well as band in a box files of them. So if you have the band in a box software, you can loop them at any tempo and practice them in any key. And this is all available for download at jazzguitar.richiezellen.com forward slash premium. Here's a minor 251 uh, phrase consisting exclusively of the shapes and a few added chromatics like I showed you earlier. Now, before I do this, I just want to explain how you need to view the fretboard when playing a minor 251. So for the two minor seven flat five chord, and we're playing this in the key of A minor, so the uh, two chord would be a B, and in this instance a, 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 a B minor seven with the ninth and the uh, flatted five. We want to focus on the starting note as being either the two on the sixth string, a 
know, can also be on the fourth string, or the, the tritone of the two, which is the uh, flatted six. And when we go to the five chord, which in this case is an E7 altered, we want to move either of those shapes a minor third down or a minor third up. Also with the two, if we move it a, a minor third down, it becomes the uh, the sharp 11, the tritone of the E. If we move it a minor third up, we're on the root of the E, okay? Once we're on the uh, 5 7 chord and we want to move to the uh, 1 chord, which is in a minor major 7 chord in this case, all we're going to do is move either of the shapes a whole step down. So if we're on, uh, on this E shape here, we move down. If we're on the tritone uh, on, over the E shape, we move down. We move down to the uh, one chord, the A minor major seven, where it starts the shape on the major seventh. Okay? So here is an example, and you can see the uh, notation on the screen. And it goes like this. One, two, three, four. And that should give you a taste for what we can do with these shapes over a 251. In the download, you'll find a total of eight lines. And now for our grand finale, I'm going to briefly improvise over a standard progression, which I'll let you guess what it is. I will try to stick to using the notes and the shapes for the most part, but I will also stick some other more conventional resources as well to create a balance. <laughs> So, did you recognize what standard that progression corresponds to? It was over the A section of Cole Porter's What Is This Thing Called Love? And with that, we conclude our lesson. I truly hope you've learned something new, and as usual, I appreciate your comments and likes. Also, if this is your first time on the Jazz Guitar Channel, please subscribe and click on the bell icon so you will be notified of all my upcoming lessons. Ah, and don't forget to practice your tetratonic polygon inversions. <laughs> See you in the next lesson. Stay safe.